Hey guys, how you doing? It's the Honeydew Carpenter. I am in my shop again and today I was going through some emails and it became apparent to me that I need to do a quick tutorial on the foam mate and how to effectively use it and effectively make foam with it. So um, that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm just going to show how to mix up the uh, solution, how to install it in the gun, and how to adjust the valves with the air on it to make great foam. Okay guys, I gotta put this to ounces. And we, I mix it 32 to one, so um, on the soap solution. I like it just a touch heavier than what I've heard other people doing it. So I wanna tear that out. And I'm going to put two pounds in, which is 32 ounces. No, maybe I'll put four in, if I can fit four. Okay, there we go. There's two pounds in that bottle. And I am going to put two pounds in this bottle as well. There it is, two pounds. If it's an eighth of an ounce off, I wouldn't even worry about it. So I'm gonna put two ounces of the, I'm using Schwab's shampoo, because it's what I prefer. Oops, I'm gonna have to add two more pounds to that. I forgot I was only supposed to do one ounce. Okay. Now I have to add some more water to this bottle because I did, that was a one to 16, not a 32 to one ratio. Okay, a little bit of foam came out the top. I try and put the water in first to avoid that. You put the water in first. You put the soap solution in first, pouring the water in, you get that happening. Okay guys, what we've got here is I've got a, my slurry pan, which Mrs. Honeydew used to call her turkey bacon pan, yeah. But I've got a sheet metal ring in it. It's about six inches tall and it's quite a bit bigger around than like a five gallon bucket. I did the math on it. It's about two and a half gallons, about exactly half of a, the area of a five gallon bucket. And for this demonstration, we're just going to use this and shoot foam into here and uh, go from there. Uh, right over here, hanging on my vise, I've got my foam mate. And so the first thing you want to do is take your soap solution. And we're going to have to take the foam mate, open it up. Oh, that's not the first thing you want to do. The first thing you want to do is make sure your valves are all closed. 
Now, the valve on this and the valve on the end on my Fomate are identical. Okay, so this is the valve for the reservoir or the foam solution with the quarter inch clear tubing coming off of it. The zeros on the valve have to be in direct alignment with the valve for it to be off. If you rotate it this way, oh, it started sending foam out, <laughs> or foam solution. If you rotate it this way or that way, even the slightest bit, it'll start uh, sending the foam solution out. So I've made sure my valves are closed. And now I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel my foam made up. I'm gonna feel and then I'm putting about 32 ounces in it. Stick the lid on, close it tight so no air escapes. And what you're going to find when I hook the air on, these valves are actually regulator valves. So they're not completely, completely airtight. When they're completely closed, a small am amount of air will still flow through. But it's just negligible and it doesn't really affect anything. But when I hook the air up here, and start opening the air, I'll open the air first. And what you'll end up happening is air will just flow through and no foam will be being made. And then as soon as I start opening the solution valve, then foam will begin to be made. Now, if you have too much air, um, it doesn't make the best foam. If you have too little air, it doesn't make the best foam. So the best way to do it is kind of determine how fast you want to make foam and just open up your uh, valve maybe a quarter turn on the solution end and see what happens. And then you can adjust your air from there until it's making the nice foam that you want. And once you get the hang of it, it's just, you just stick the end in the bucket and you know exactly how to do it really quickly. So we'll go ahead and I will hook the air up to it. Okay, so now I've got the air hook going through my gun. I'm going to uh, just kind of zoom in on the pan and I'm going to start letting just a little bit of uh, air come through the gun. And I'll just adjust the uh, soap or the foam solution valve to kind of match the air to make a good quality foam. But the first thing I'll do is just set it in there and open the valve and let some air in. See, all it's doing is just blowing a little bit of air in there. I'll take this out and kind of show you. Now, once I introduce the foam solution, and you can see it go through the tube, there it goes. Now it's going to start making foam. Okay. That foam is a little bit heavy because it has too much air for the foam. So I'll open up and give it a little bit more foam solution. And I got way too much air.
now I'll turn off the foam solution until just air comes out. And you can see very little air is coming out. Now I'm going to turn the air all the way down. We literally made two and a half gallons of foam in not very um, much amount of time. Hey guys, if you like what we're doing here, go ahead and like and subscribe and click the bell at the bottom for notifications. Um, I have had a ton of fun building stuff with Aircrete. You can make lightweight building blocks out of it. You can build a raised garden bed out of it. I've built a forge. A, uh, I built insulated stovepipe. I built a rocket mass heater for Julie's cabin. It's very resilient to heat, high heat. And it's very just versatile. Now when I say versatile, obviously you have to have different mixes for different things and you have to treat it differently depending on what application you're using it for. But my goodness, uh, it is a fun building material. I am in the process of building a shed and a geodesic dome. So we'll get to those projects here pretty quick.